Hi, in today's conversation, we're going to talk about the true cost of teaching yourself to code or learning to code. Hello there, welcome to my channel. Listen, after more than 12 years as a lawyer, I tried to start my own company. It was a startup and I was a non-technical founder. Sure, we managed to get a product to market. But you know what? I had a horrible time finding technical co-founders. In fact, I found a couple, but they ended up leaving. I was so sick of it. At the age of 37, I finally taught myself to code. But man, it wasn't easy. A year or so later, I ended up joining a startup as an engineer. And a year after that, I joined Google as an engineer. So listen, if you want to transition your career into tech, or you want to become your own technical co-founder, subscribe to my channel. So then this brings me to the next point, which is what is the true cost of saving money? So let's use an example. There's three, three scenarios that we can go to here. We can go to university or some sort of formal education that comes with a degree, or we can do a boot camp, or we can end up um, just teaching ourselves. So, you know, this is obviously the hardest part of them all, being truly self-taught. And by self-taught, what I mean is that you're not going through a formal degree program and you're not going through a bootcamp pro program. If you spend money on courses for yourself, that's still self-taught. So the fact that you're spending money is irrelevant. It's how you get taught. That's the important bit. So let's go with universities to start with. Okay, what do we know here? There's going to be a money cost. So let's say, you know, for argument's sake, university costs 50K, uh, right? Cost. And then your time, let's say it takes, you know, let's just go easy and say time is two years, right? Two years. Now, in that time, you're not earning any income or maybe you're going part-time. But if you're going part-time, it's going to be double the time, right? Remember how I said there are three currencies and you always have to adjust them? So if you're doing part-time university, your overall time taken to achieve your goal goes up. If you're doing full-time, your time is, is shortened, but your money goes up because you're not earning. So generally, let's say when you're in university, you're not really going to be earning or you're going to be earning a minimum amount. So, you know, if you are doing full-time university and you give up your job, that's a lot of money here, right? And so you have lost income um, plus the cost. And cost means in money and time. Okay, so that's uh, with universities. Now let's consider the bootcamp angle, right? Well, bootcamp's not really very different because you see um, your cost may be, let's say, 15K. Let's say for argument's sake, the cost is 15K. And your time is, let's say, six months. Great. Now, if you're doing a full-time bootcamp, which most, you know, the most experiences, most successful outcomes are, then you've lost income from your job. You've had to give up your job for six months. Now, let's say your income is, you know, mm, I don't know, let's go with it. An amount three thousand per month, right? Let's say it's dollars three thousand per month. That's your income. So for here, for two years, that's you know twenty four months times three. What is that? That's seventy two k over three years. And here it's six months times three, so that's eighteen k of lost income, right? Plus fifteen k of expense. So this one right here is thirty three k for a boot camp in terms of your overall cost just in money, right? So this is just money. Overall cost is 33K, lost income plus the amount you actually spend. Then you have a situation of how long it's gonna take you to find work after you finish. So on average, you'll see most reports in boot camps and universities say, you know, 90% of people will get a job in six months. So let's say yours is the worst case scenario. You then add another six months of lost income, right? Now this may be higher than 3K because now you're a developer, maybe you get you know, 5K per month. Um, and you, th that's part of the reason you want to change is you want to get to 5K per month from 3K, right? It's You're almost doubling your income there. Okay, so now you have lost income at that future market rate because it took you six months to find a job. Now, let's contrast all that with being a self-taught engineer. So your cost could be, you know, let's say you spend zero. Well, you spend a lot of time then and you may not even achieve your goals, in which case you're frustrated, you're jaded, you're tired, you're discouraged and you've lost confidence in yourself. Not a great situation. But let's say you spend, you know, you, you're willing to spend, let's just say you're willing to spend 10K, 
okay that's quite a lot that's a lot um, but let's say you're willing to spend 10k and you know you're teaching yourself so it's going to take you let's say two years but you're working full time and this is the important part so you the reason it's going to take you two years is because you're only able to do three hours a day or two hours a day or 20 hours a week right whatever it is and so you, you actually you've not lost any income because you continue to maintain your income and if you choose correctly and you have the right guidance unlike universities and a lot of boot camps you have very high quality um, counseling and guidance and coaching around actually finding the job now keep in mind that nobody just wants to learn to code everybody wants to learn to code either to build a startup or to find a job right the ultimate end game is you need to find a job and because of this coaching guidance you're still earning your income but you know you get the right guidance you spend the money and now you get a job whatever let's say in three years time your overall cost is still only ten thousand you haven't lost income because for those two years you're still earning and so you haven't actually lost any income and at the end of three years you get your 5k a month job now you get your 5k a month job how long does it take to repay that even if you assume you want to charge interest or whatever because it was three years ago that you spent ten thousand dollars and let's say you charge interest in it, right you will recover ten thousand plus let's say a thousand dollars in interest at ten percent which is crazy high um but let's say that was it you will recover eleven thousand dollars in a little over two months of working in your future role in the meanwhile you've got the guidance you've not given up you've made consistent efforts and you've not lost income along the way that was the model that actually ended up helping for me though i didn't have access to coaches in the formal sense um, i did pay for help every now and then to get specific guidance for what i needed and this goes back to my earlier point about thinking like an investor when you think like an investor and you're investing your three currencies in whatever mix and proportion that works for you you have to think how long till i get it back so let's look at universities for example you spend the fifty thousand dollars for your education you've missed income of seventy two thousand dollars over the you know three years or two years that you've not been able to work then you spend another six months so let's say you know what let's just go easy let's say you spend a hundred k all up in lost income and cost of education cost of tuition now for you to get 100k um, if you get 100k a year job it's going to take you 12 months to recover that investment in a boot camp let's say you spend let's say it's thirty thousand dollars in lost income plus the cost of the boot camp and maybe another five thousand dollars so thirty five thousand dollars five thousand dollars being the time it takes you to find a new job i'm really reducing the numbers here. it's usually more but let's say thirty five thousand dollars is your total investment in time money and lost income right thirty five thousand dollars when you're getting five thousand per month in your new dev job is seven months to break even now let's say you spend only 10k and that's quite a high amount but let's say you spend 10k in teaching yourself and it takes you three years but you've not lost any income and at the end of it you manage to find your first developer role and it's a bit more even if your role is not paying you more than 3k let's say you move completely sideways and you're getting the same amount of money it still takes only three months to recover chances are if you move into development there's a good chance you may end up getting more than you previously earned in which case you're going to recover your money in three months or less so in one situation you're recovering your money in one year in the other situation you're recovering your money in six-ish months and in the third situation you're recovering your money in three years and you've not actually lost cash in the meanwhile like that to me is an extraordinary investment and that's why i'm such a fan of thinking like an investor when it comes to your career and thinking about the true cost and the return on your investment when you decide to teach yourself to code i know we are all all in, against the idea of trying to pay for anything but it's really important really really important for you to distinguish between an expense and an investment by definition an expense is money that you don't recover back an investment is something that you not only recover but improves your overall position so if it takes you three months to recover ten thousand dollars worth of you know self-education expenses then over a lifespan of 20 30 years as an engineer or let's say you only did it for two years you've still got one year and nine months or one and a half years worth of extra income that you got or a better life or a better quality of living better access to the job market is the huge difference for me when i moved uh to engineering was that just the number of job requests or job interview opportunities that get thrown at you um, all the time because developers are in demand and for the foreseeable future will be so that was a huge experience change for me i'd always been so used to 
having to go knock on doors and apply and act, proactively apply and look for jobs. And don't get me wrong, you still absolutely need to do that. But I've never been in an industry before where people are constantly hitting you up to get access to you because you're in demand. So think of all these improvements to your life and then think about, are you an investment or not? Do you view yourself as an asset or not? Are you willing to be an investor and a CEO in your own life? And if so, whether it's two grand or 10 grand, if you have the money, spend it if you're committed. Now that brings me to the final point about the true cost of learning to code. No matter how how cheap or how expensive it is, you will only get the results if you're committed. And in my experience, and certainly looking at myself, I noticed that when I wasn't willing to spend money, it wasn't that I was afraid of losing the money at the heart of it. It was more that I was afraid that I wasn't committed enough. I had no problem spending the money or finding a way to get the money when I was completely committed to achieving my goal. But here's another example for those of you who may be parents or even if you're not. The fact that so many parents really put themselves in some amount of financial stress to put their kids to college is because the parents are completely committed that their children must have a quality education, must be educated. And because of that level of commitment, they're willing to do extraordinary things in order to put you through college. You would also make, do extraordinary things to put yourself through college. I was much more willing to spend a ridiculous amount of money on my MBA than I was on teaching myself to code. And when you think about it, that's completely irrational. Why would I want to spend more money on a university degree than on something that's a skill that's actually in demand? If just because I'm teaching myself, that makes no sense, right? Ultimately, I need to be committed or not. And that's what I realized the answer was. I doubted whether I could successfully achieve my goal on my own, and therefore I didn't spend money on it, and therefore I did not achieve the goal on my own for the first three times. It was only in the fourth time when I had learned a lot of other things from my startup and I started to think like an investor and I learned all these meta skills about analyzing how to achieve a goal to which you're committed that I then applied it to my coding journey and saw all the mistakes I made the previous times and changed all those things and bam, there I was. There I was, you know, with a successful outcome, my first developer job. I applied for four jobs very strategically. I was very careful in the kind of job I applied for. Um, having been in the industry a long time, I, I know how hiring works and how um, interviewing works. Um, and I got all four offers that I sat for. And the, all of these are techniques that have nothing to do with coding. They're very meta skills. Um, so think like an investor, understand your true cost of your investment, which is your investment in yourself, and analyze your time to recover your investment and work out what's most likely to get you successful. And if you're committed, you will do whatever it takes to get to your goal. So thank you for listening. And if you're still listening to this, leave some comments, um, exchange with me any ideas that you have, like and subscribe to the channel, and let me know whether there are things in this that you'd like me to get into in greater detail, whether you disagree, whether you have another perspective. I'm always looking for new ideas, new techniques to help improve everybody's life. Thanks and see you next time.